he have done. At the moment it is Lopez the pacemaker, then is Chris Room, and behind Chris Room is faithful friend Richie Ford, waiting to take up the pacemaker when he's called through. The white jersey of the youngster from Columbia, Quintana. They are now at 10.7 in this chase group, and behind Jens Voigt. Well, Jens Voigt is doing a sterling job there. It's 43 seconds between Jens Voigt and their three chases. And we don't yet have a gap back to the main field with the yellow jersey, but I reckon it can't be very much more than 15 or 20 seconds. And the Schleck comes up behind Andrew Talansky there, as well as uh, Epilox is up here too. There we can see, 10.7. Well, let's quickly go down to inside the race with Steve Marino. Well, Phil, I just had a two-second conversation with Team Sky. Asked if they might give Richie Port a chance. He looked at me, smiled, yeah, and said, go, maybe. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I wondered that myself, Steve. We're going to find out now because it's all action. It is every man for himself on this last climb of this year's tour de France of notes. So, as we watch here, Mogastar trying to get in front now. I don't know if you notice, but we've got Chris Froome. He's made the first move. He's shed all of his teammates. But normally now we would see Richie Port in front of Chris Froome. Do you think he's setting it up for, for Richie to win the stage? Well, what a way that would be. What class that would show if he could do something like that. These two have worked so much together throughout this race that Richie Port may well be given the chance to try and get the stage victory for himself. Led to the top by Chris they know each other so well, they know each other's reactions, they can read each other's body language. Maybe that's the secret of Team Sky this afternoon. Port is up into third position in the line. There's going to be many secrets revealed on this final climb today to the unknown summit of Semnos as far as the Tour de France is concerned. And at the one band that they picked up those three, so they've come up to the Pierre Rowan, TJ Van Garden, who used his team to try and get him clear, but He's got mixed up in a different type of uh, storm here as the yellow jersey comes up on his back wheel. I was just thinking though, the, the, the ride being done by Jens Voigt cannot be underestimated. It has been such a great performance. Well, the man's a star. It was 43 seconds his advantage. Uh, Andy Schleck is trying to get himself uh, back into the yellow jersey. Group. He's struggling a fraction, but he's riding better and better. Ten kilometres to go, and Voigt is still ahead of the Tour de France. This man tried to win the greatest moment of his life this stage, but the chase now is only 50 seconds behind, and it includes the men that matter in the Tour. Very, very rarely do you see Jens Voigt with a grimace of pain quite as bad as that one, but he knows what's happening behind him. He knows he's got the best men in the Tour de France chasing him at 50 seconds. He's going to put them into a spotted bother this afternoon as we now see this group being reduced very, very dramatically. Of the riders in second, third, fourth and fifth, they're all beneath us now at 10 kilometres to go. The 47 second buffer, which covers Contador, Quintana, Croizinger and Rodriguez, they are all here. Well, these are the men who uh, He was in the breakaway for a long time, he's being left behind at 10 kilometres to go. Now we're looking for this 10 kilometres, Phil, I would think we're looking at a climb of around about 25, 26 minutes. That's a long way to go. Jan Bakelens, the early couple of day hero when we were in Corsica, pulled on the yellow jersey in his first Tour de France. He's still in our camera lenses now. This is the battle as the room will finish second to fifth in the Tour de France. Uh, Chris Froome has shown us right now he's heading for victory tomorrow in Paris. Well, Molimo has gone off the back there with the uh, Jakob Fulsang, and this group at the front here is becoming smaller and smaller while still Jens Voigt survives. I've got it at 42 seconds now. It is absolutely amazing that uh, riders from Great Britain have never won the Tour de France in 99 years, and Bradley Wiggins wins last year. This year, Chris Froome will win the Tour now. They're at the polka dot jersey here in trouble of King of the Mountains. Well, uh, just jump, jumping past him very quickly, there was uh, Daniel Moreno from uh, Team Katusha trying to get it back up to help his team leader, Joaquin Rodriguez. It's Rui Costa is doing the pacemaking on the front of that group, for the man who won the stage yesterday in the downpour down into the Grand Bournon. 40 seconds the gap now, two, the man on screen here, Jens Voigt. 
40 seconds Paul he's about 8 and a half kilometers from the summit as we look here now this is the select Verde looks over at Rui Costa quickly Richie Paul picks it up he takes with him the yellow jersey of Chris Froome Alejandro Valverde is a very prolific winner. Rui Costa's disappeared now from this group, Phil. His job done for the day. Alejandro Valverde wants to set this up for the man in the white jersey there. He wants to crack Alberto Contador. He wants, Rui, he wants his teammate Quintana to move from third to second place in the overall. But we can now see Grutiger starting to crack there. 94. It's almost ironic that the man behind him in the overall standings is that man in the red and white there, Joaquim Rodriguez. Yes, and he wants to get over at number 94. He wants Wants to get over number 128 in the white jersey. These riders in our lens now, these four men occupy second, third, fourth, and fifth in the Tour de France. 47 seconds covers them all. By the time they get to the summit, those seconds will alter their position overall. Alejandro Valverde is now burying himself. He is in the top 10 in the overall standings himself with that phenomenal ride yesterday. He's up into ninth place. But you don't think about that when you're trying to help a teammate get onto the podium, get onto a higher step of the podium in the final kilometres of a stage of the Tour de France. We're 8.8 .8 kilometres to go. That's 5.5 miles. Rodriguez has gone forward. Rosinger is going backwards. The difference between them is 14 seconds. A blink of an eyelid when you're climbing a mountain as steep as this now. As he, Rodriguez in red, trying to hang on to second place overall, Alberto Contador. But then the sights now, Jens Boy to put an incredible performance by this 41-year-old, but he's not going to have the fairy tale results. Well, Alejandro Valverde is the man doing the damage. It's still just 10 seconds to Jens Voigt. He will know once this is done that it's over, but he's the man who let the blue touch paper to start setting off the fireworks here this afternoon. And what a way to do it. But now we've got a great battle here. Valverde, by the way, throughout his career, has won 100 professional races. He's a great competitor here, not even thinking about himself. I'm sure he would love to win this stage, but he's got faith in the one man behind him and his own team in the right jersey. Nairo Quintana. When he had a mechanical problem, a broken wheel, he was in second place in this year's Tour de France. He lost 10 minutes that day and with it all home. Now he's trying to ride for the man in white, his young new teammate, and try and get him on the podium in Paris, Quintana. He sits third at the moment, but he is only 12 seconds ahead of four, but boys, he is gone. So he's just going to be worried about the location now of the rider in the red jersey, Rodriguez. Well, this is Bacalanza Molina there, number 164, but this is where the race is really happening. Now it's all Richie Port. They're waiting to see when the rider in the white jersey there launches the attack because he has got such a mix and vicious acceleration on the slopes of a climb. Rodriguez on the other side is moving to. He's gone through on the inside and Quintana's marking him because Rodriguez is the one man who can knock Quintana out of third place in the Tour de France. And if Contador doesn't respond, then Quintana will be looking for second place in the Tour de France. Well, Rodriguez, you see, Phil, let's not forget, Chris Froome doesn't need to chase those riders. No. He's got a big but he is, but he's going to. This is the pride of the yellow jersey on his shoulders now. Look at the Chris speed he's going, going by. He stays. This man has accelerated with his familiar high cadence, and there's no reaction from the men behind him. Yes, but look at this, what these two riders in second and third position are doing. They are getting rid of Alberto Contador. You're looking there, Phil, at second and third in the overall standings at the end of the race. Look at this, he just jumps out of the saddle, accelerates so quickly. I think he got the nod there from Richie Port and said, go for it, mate. Well, he goes and joins the front runners here. He's, on, he's behind the riders who currently occupy third and fifth in the Tour de France, but they're going to be second and third unless Alberto Contador can cross that gap. And here is Contador now, uh, being watched over by Richie Port. Contador is in great danger of losing second place in the Tour. Well, there's only 26 seconds separates Joachim Rodriguez from... Uh, Alberto Contador, and he's at 47 seconds, but this man now is trying to win the stage. This is the steepest part of the climb, 10.5% as Rodriguez and Quintana come back to the wheel of Chris Froome. Because if they can hold Chris Froome, they will finish second and third. You could be looking in the correct order of the first three riders in the Tour de France tomorrow in Paris. But the other two have got to hold on to Chris Froome. That may not be possible. That was a painful 10.5% gradient there for those riders. Uh, now we've got Alberto Contador 
He's 10 seconds behind that group in front of him. That means he's very, very close to losing his second place to Quintana. Quintana was only looking for 11 seconds at the start of the day. Rodriguez looking for 47 to go into third place in the Tour de France. He could be off the podium for the two-time winner of the Tour, Alberto Contador. He gets no help from Richie Port. And this is the other man who's suffering too, Contador's teammate, Kreuziger, started the day in fourth place. Could be finishing the day in fifth. Well, lots of so there's uh, number 89, is the Riblon, winner of the Abduez and Molliver. Full time for all riders in the top 10 in the overall standings. But Molimo really has suffered over the last few days. He's been holding down a, a slight sickness as Rodriguez is very happy to do the pace making. So too is Quintana. Yes, Molimo and uh, Full time holding the highest ever finishing positions in the Tour de France. And that's where they probably will finish with their time gaps now. Six and seven overall. This is Contador. He's left very lonely now, guarded by Sky with Richie Port. And after all of the weeks he's held second place, he's attacked downhill as well as uphill. This is Paul Sang and Bauer Oliver. Contador is losing his second place overall. Well, at the moment, Phil, Contador is 24 seconds behind the trio at the front of the race. So Rodriguez, and Quintana and Froome. Well, a little bit of a chat here. This is a replay that has just happened. Well, knows what he's at stake. He knows what they're racing for, and he has no reason to work with these guys at all. As far as he's concerned, he's consolidating his position in the overall standings of this race. Well, Contador may well be just recovering a bit because he's pulled himself back to 22 seconds, and he won't get any help either from Richie Port. And Frutiger is actually riding himself back too, because he's at 33 seconds, just behind his team leader. As Contador continues to race up towards, he's now he is refining himself. He's getting into his own climbing rhythm now. After all of the shots, the shot, acceleration, the other time gap, he's saying he's gone back to 27, 26 seconds behind. Well, Rodriguez knows he's got to look for 47 seconds to get himself above Alberto Contador in the overall standings. At the moment, he has 26 seconds. He has to defend the Contador. He's won the Tour de France in the, in the past and he really wants to get onto the podium this afternoon. We knew it would come down to this. It's still 6.7 kilometers to go to the summit and I reckon that's uh, between uh, 17 and 22 minutes. Back on Molimer and Fulton. 6.6 kilometers to go now. And it looks as though Contador and he is poisoned that he's recovering just a little bit. Uh, Chris Froome, uh, usually in this Tour de France, has company in the last six kilometers of a mountain. Remember, he won a top of the front two wearing the yellow jersey. Only the other Eddie Merckx has ever done that before. And he won on H toward the name and he pulled on that yellow jersey exactly two weeks today. And he's defended it ever since. Well, Kruziger has climbed his way back to his team leader. And he's now going to go by and set the pace for Alberto Contador here over these final few kilometres. He realises what's at stake. Doesn't make that much of a difference for Kruziger whether he's fourth or fifth in the overall standings. But for the man behind him, he's talking about the podium. He's thinking about the podium. And he's been in the podium position number two for two weeks, more or less, Alberto Contador. Round the corner, though, but not very far around the corner. Chris Froome, Rodriguez and Quintana. The man on the right who never, ever lets us know how he is really feeling. Well, Froome now, Phil, is just quite happy to set his own tempo on a climb. And sometimes that's better, especially when you come to the steep parts of the climb. So he just sits there, and he out of the saddle climbing, which is a very different climbing style than we've seen from Chris Froome over the last three weeks of this race. He's aiming to finish his tour victory tomorrow in Paris off with a blaze of panache here as he heads up to what would be his fourth stage win. Quintana is not being distressed at all on the right. He is holding on to third and moving into second place while Contador is dropped behind him. Well, 34 seconds, uh, another 13 seconds and Rodriguez will be moving up into a podium position at the end of the day. Rodriguez said for two weeks he wanted a podium finish in Paris. He's come down to the last climb on the mountain of the Tour de France. Kreuzinger has suffered all sorts to get back to his team captain. 
and he's trying to bring Contador back into play. He's trying to defend second place in the tour. Well, the gap now is 37 seconds between the three-man leading group and the Contador group. So Contador only has 10 seconds left in the bag to keep himself on the podium tomorrow night. Full sack there, and uh, Jens Boyd still hanging on in for a top finish at the top of the climb. Five and a half. 5.9 kilometers to go now. Contador's group reportedly has dropped back to 40 seconds. Another seven seconds and he'll go from second to fifth in the tournament. Well, it's uh, 37, 38 seconds. Uh, this is Alejandro Valverde. He was trying, he tried in the early part of this climb to set something up for his own teammate. He started the day in ninth place in the overall standings at 40 minutes and 56 seconds. Now imagine, Phil, if he hadn't lost 10 minutes on that road down to Santa Marmora. And would have been in the mix and he would have been in second place, which is where he was when he had the problem. He's got the best we've ever seen uh, in the Tour de France, Valverde. Way. They're actually saying Valverde is in fourth place on the road. He's actually riding ahead of Alberto Contador. And that's where we're headed to at the moment, right to the top. And there's still a long way where we'll have a look here to Valverde. He's 29 seconds. Uh, so he's got forward of Contador. Contador has now gone back to 40, 40 seconds. And the group got him up at a minute 36. Well, they're there in 26, uh, Contador at 40 seconds, which means he's actually at the moment lost his podium position in the Tour de France to the man in front, the man in front, and you can see, of course, that is Rodriguez. Now, going up three of them, Paul, they are racing to decide the podium of the Tour de France, those three riders. Is there still room for Quintana in his first tour to leave these two behind? Yes, there's a very good possibility for him to win the stage. He's not going to trouble Chris Froome. Froome was five minutes and 11 seconds ahead at the start of the day. But Quintana would certainly like to get himself the stage victory. And uh, somebody sent me a photograph a little while ago, Phil, that in fact, Quintana's family are at home in Colombia actually watching the television live this afternoon, and they will be spurring him on. Bet your life. The Contador margin has just dropped back to 47 seconds. He goes from second to fifth in the Tour de France at the moment. We are looking at the top three riders in the Tour right here. Yep, and Rodriguez knows that. He's going to give his all. He'd like to hold back and try and win himself the stage here this afternoon, but it's more important for him as we go past five kilometres to go. It's more important for him, I think, in his mind to get onto the podium at the Tour. Joaquim Rodriguez has been his high in his home tour of Spain, but he's never been like this in the Tour de France. Valverde is ahead of Contador and Kreuziger. As he keeps up this relentless pressure, but he's still 45 seconds behind those three riders who are riding the podium tonight as they climb up Sendos for the very first time in tour history. Well, Valverde will be dropping down into fourth place overall and his teammate Kreuziger down into 